next. Price action is among the most popular trading concepts. A trader who knows how to use price action the right way often improves his performance and his way of looking at charts significantly. So what is price action, you ask? It's a favorite among short to medium term traders. Price action trading brings together an interesting mix of information and different views. These include historic price patterns, technical indicators, and the investor's ability to read the markets. And this is what price action is all about, is reading the markets. It's getting yourself familiar with an asset, understanding what that asset is doing, getting to know it intimately and historically, and then being able to read what price is trying to tell you on the charts. Now, I'll give you an example. Yeah, it's a little long-winded, but let me give it to you. You work in a, you know, in a corporate office in a in an industrial park. You live a couple kilometers, a couple miles away from there. Every morning for many years, you get up, you kiss the wife on the forehead, go downstairs when you have to sleep, grab the coffee, say goodbye to the kids, push the button, open the garage door, get in the car, pull out the car, and get out of the driveway and head yourself to work. Now, without even thinking, you know it's trash day, so you want to turn left on Main because you know 3rd Street is going to be backed up with the trash trucks. But you know you don't want to go too far in Main because then you run into the school traffic. So you're going to turn right on 2nd. And then you're going to get on the highway the next exit, and you're going to get off one exit early because you know that there's some workmen up at the next exit. And you do this, but you don't think about it. It's second nature because you've been driving these routes to work day after day, week after week, year after year. And you know these historical price actions. You know historically what has happened when this has happened before. So like I said, Wednesday, when you pull out the driveway and you see the trash cans are on the street and they just, and you can see the trash truck farther up, you know which way to act and react. Now, what happens? You finally, the kids are getting older, they need more space to sell the house, buy a bigger house just a couple blocks away. You get up in the morning, you kiss the wife, you end up falling down the stairs because they're not where they used to be and they're a little bit longer. You get in the kitchen and now you can't find the coffee pot, you gotta turn on the lights because now the kitchen's laid out different. Now you have a door between you, the kitchen and the garage and you have an automatic garage door opener so you don't have to sit there and press the button and wait for the garage, it's gonna open up. And then you come out and guess what? There's no trash cans anywhere and you don't know where the school is. So now you gotta pay attention. And you know what, for the next couple of weeks, you're gonna go the wrong way on the wrong road and get stuck behind the school bus, get stuck behind the trash truck, get off on the wrong highway. You'll get the work, but you're not familiar with what's happening now until you get adjusted. And this is what happens to markets. Markets for a long time or an asset will exhibit certain behavior that is done before. And when you've seen that behavior before, you can apply that to what's happening now. Now, because we have all this mess with Russia and Ukraine and we're in kind of risk off mode, markets aren't doing what they did a couple months ago. But you said, ah, I remember seeing those patterns from two years ago when Russia invaded, you know, did whatever they did with the Crimea or something happened with, you know, bombing in Saudi Arabia and affected the oils. And we say, ah, I remember that route. And price action is about this. And this explains why price action trading do not involve fundamental analysis of an individual market or a commodity. It's being able to look at those charts without getting waylaid that oil is going through the ceiling and it's now at about $113 a, a barrel today. Okay. If you get stuck and tied up and all the news is coming out of Ukraine and now, you know, um, what's his name? Biden 
now closed down, uh, uh, sanctioned the oil imports to the U.S., so did the U.K. Europe's cutting back 60s. Well, we can expect oil. You might get tied up in the fundamental analysis instead of looking at what is happening on your charts. As many decisions associated with price action trading are subjective. What one investor may see as a breakout, another may see as a potential price reversal. Compare and contrast this with pure technical analysis where you effectively ignore the experience of investors in favor of cold, hard trends. Human nature dictates that futures and commodity prices can be extremely volatile, which we've all learned in the couple, last couple, the last two weeks. But this is one of the ways that you are also remember when we when I talked about experience, education, knowledge, risk management, more experience, more knowledge. Well, this is where all that comes into play. Now, I give all of my students a lecture about online trading. Online trading has made open up a world, a big world to all of us. When I started trading, you had to have a stock broker for stocks, you had to have a commodities broker for commodities, you had to have this, and you had to call the broker on the phone and talk to him on the phone, and he had to execute your trade. You know, now we have Alvexo, who offers hundreds of assets and hundreds of classes, which is great, but too many traders get themselves lost. And I'll talk to a guy in a seminar, and first thing he'll talk to me about Bitcoin. Then he'll start talking to me about Alphabet. And he'll go off and then start talking to me about the Euro. And I'll say, buddy, are you trading all those? And he said, yeah. I said, how are you an expert at anything? How do you know the personality of an asset? You can't physically watch it. I've been trading for a zillion years. And you know what? I only trade Euro and its crosses. That's it. Now, sure, I know Bitcoin. I can talk to you right and left about Bitcoin, but I don't trade it because I don't know its intricate personalities. Oil is really interesting at the moment, but to be honest with you, outside the headlines in newspapers and you know, writing on oil for a long time, I don't know the intricacies and the historical prices, and I don't know what we're currently using and what the, you know, the numbers are because I don't follow oil. Now, if you're going to be a price action trader, you have to know the personalities of your assets. And you only get to know that by specializing in them. So keep that in mind. Being able to trade lots of lots and lots of instruments isn't necessarily a good thing. Now, maybe you can be an expert in Alphabet and an expert in you know, Bitcoin because you specialize in those. It doesn't mean you have to stay all in the Euro but you just can't jump all over this place. Now, in our current market, we're seeing something called overbought. Now, overbought situations are often created because the fear and greed while panic selling can take over in the event of disappointing news. Now, what did we have? We've had a whole bunch of craziness out there because we do have war that we have to deal with. Okay. Big risk of trading. But we also had an incredibly great non farms payroll report last week in the U.S. We also had the Federal Reserve considering raising interest rates. So in the middle of a war, oil prices are record high, but we have jobs market doing incredible, so hot in the U.S. It's burning up. We have inflation coming up. So we have overbought situations of some assets because crude oil is probably well overbought, and we have major selling in other assets. Now, these are the type of scenarios where price action investment strategies can prove extremely useful. Because what happens is when we go into overbought or oversold territories and we have panic selling, but we can look at how an asset reacted the last time it was in a risk off mode. So the key to reading price action charts is to take in short term fluctuations. It also, it's also crit critical to notice emerging trends and focus on patterns which repeat time and time again. You will hear people talking about swing patterns, support and resistance, wave analysis, trend lines, moving average, to name a few of the different chart patterns. 
candlesticks and bars are also very popular charts. Now, for example, when a chart is about to crash through a support level, it's unlikely to do it in one fell swoop. You may see an index or commodity price contract and bounce off a support level as, as traders take advantage of a sell-off. But knowing where these are, what it's done before, let's pop up some live charts. And let's take a look at where prices acted and reacted. Okay, here we're looking at the Euro US dollar. Now, the Euro is where in the toilet now because the dollar is getting exceptionally strong because of risk off move. Now, if you understood this, you know that the dollar increases during risk off trading and because the US economy is doing so well. But war in Europe kills the Euro value. But you can see on here all the price action interpretations. Now look at this. Now this range over here to the left, this is where the markets stand a great deal of time. And you could have bought and sold off of these support and resistance levels. Then you can see price clearly breaking out of the range and moving up in the resistance offering a trade up. We have it topping out here, coming back down. And these are opportunities. Knowing how an asset should act and where it will act is critically important to you. Knowing patterns. Now, I'm, I am a pattern trader, but I trade predominantly triangles. Now, I call anything that's got three sides, two angles converging, a triangle. I don't distinguish between wedges and flags and pennants. Okay. There, I don't consider, I don't vary, I don't separate symmetrical and, and descending and ascending. They're all triangles. Triangles are great because there's always a breakout and we can read that breakout. You know, to me, triple tops, double bottoms, triple, they have in our type of markets, in our type of trade, they happen all the time. But knowing how an asset will react or what it should do when we see it developing into a triangle pattern can help us make important trading decisions. You know, there's all different ways to read price action, but it comes down to some real basics. Being able to look at your price, knowing where important price levels are and understanding what that asset is trying to tell you at that time. And that's all based on knowing and understanding that particular asset. And so being able to read what price is telling you on your charts becomes critically important. Eventually the price will crash to a support level, often prompting an array of short selling. Next, let's take a few, let's take a look at a few trading strategies based on a variety of chart patterns in more detail. Now, as we know, there's lots of charts. Most of us today trade from candlestick charts. I used to be a hardcore bar chart trader. But that's because when I used to sit in the pits and trade, we were hand charting. And most of us traded, nobody traded from candlesticks, traded from bars because since we had to sit there with a graph paper, it was a lot easier and faster to write, you know, to draw the bars on a bar on a graph paper than it was filling in candlesticks. Now, you'll hear about patterns, popular patterns, but they're basically, a lot of these, you have to separate them from stock markets and investing to trading. Like, we'll read in the paper all the time about head and shoulders. Well, head and shoulders happen quite often, but in our type of trading, they take too long to develop, and they're more reliable in longer term trades. Now, head and shoulders is pretty easy. You have an upside down and a right side up head and shoulders, and they form the head and shoulders of a person with a neckline. Then we have things that the, you, you'll hear about often, quite often, double bottoms, double tops, triple bottoms, triple tops. I pay no attention to any of them. Because hitting the same price twice in a few minutes in a, you know, a short-term trading period for our assets now that we're trading in pips four digits to the right happens too often. Doesn't tell you anything. 
Now, the more times it hits a level of support, once it's gone through an asset's gone through a double bottom, a triple bottom, after a triple bottom, then I'll start paying some attention to it. But it's a pattern that I don't look for. Like I said, once we've completed a triple bottom or triple top, then I will consider that line of resistance or support important. Now we have a new one that's starting to fit our trading and that's called rounded, rounding bottom. Okay. We can start looking at patterns of developing on charts. And I think I did have it up on one of my charts for you. Let's pop up one of those live charts and take a look at these interpretations. Hold on a second, let's go. Here we have a rounding bottom. Here we have a rounding top. Okay, we can see this nice natural curve of price movement. Again here. Now, this is just a pattern. It's not even a pattern you draw on a chart. It's a pattern your eye catches when you're looking at your charts. Now, things like bullish rectangles, bullish islands. Ah. Now, here comes some of my favorites, wedge. Like I said, wedge to me is the same as a triangle. Anytime we have two lines converging on each other. What the difference between a wedge and a triangle is the triangles have the same degrees. Wedges have a top and a bottom support and resistance coming, converging on each other at different degrees. And then we have an ascending triangle. Notice much different? One's pointing up, one's pointing down. But you have your resistance and your support and nobody, you'll have all kinds of lectures out there trying to tell you, well, an ascending triangle means price will break out upwards. You only know which direction price is going to go when it breaks out of the, the pattern. So what it might do doesn't help us. We want to wait for a breakout. If it breaks down, we do one thing. If it breaks up, we do something the exact opposite. So the key to any successful price action trading strategy is to remove peripheral noise, such as fundamental data, and look at price patterns, trends, and other forms of technical analysis. When combined with good old fashioned experience and a feel for the markets, this can create a very efficient investment strategy. Don't forget, even if you've opened a position based on any of the following price action trading strategies, you can also use technical data to set your stop losses and your take profit points. So one of the key aspects of price action trading when using support and resistance levels is the act that once a support level is breached, it can then turn into a resistance level and vice versa. Okay, now, too many of my new traders, and actually too many experience, get so wrapped up in support and resistance levels. I tell you to take the word support and resistance, and I use them interchangeably. Okay, you can take the word support and resistance off your chart and just call them Price levels, they're important price levels because when price is moving up, that's a resistance. When price is broken through and then coming back down to it, it's your support, okay? They flip flop depending on which way price is moving. It's just a price level that was important in the journey up and the journey down. So resistance, you're flipped to support. So these, how you got them, what they mean is only in today's jargon based on which way the asset is moving at the moment. Then we have things like looking at pin bars, inside bars, bar combos. They're a good sign. When you see these inside bars form within or near a pin bar and the pin bars are on the chart are talking to price action traders. When you see pin bars developing at support and resistance levels, they're telling us something. So what's a pin bar? A pin bar is just <coughs> a candlestick. Okay. 
but a pin bar is in relationship to where the price is. And then we have inside bars and mother bars, depending on the relationship between the candles. So many price action traders are extremely vigilant. They're always on the lookout for what's known as inside bar patterns. You can recognize these by the emergence of a second bar within the body of the previous bar. So we can call these mother bar and inside bar, mother bar and baby bar. But what we see is one bar or one candle in one color, and then the next bar, the next candle is the opposite color, but fully engulfed inside the body of the previous bar. The primary bar is sometimes called a mother bar and will often indicate a period of consolidation and potentially turning points for key support and resistance levels. So seeing a baby bar, mother bar, inside bar isn't important except when it's at a, a, a support or resistance, level, an important price level. If it develops at a, a significant support or resistance level, then price action is trying to tell you something. So this is the beginning of a changing trend in marks that maybe a downward movement or an upward movement between, depending on which way price is going. So like I said, pin bars happen, mother bars happen, baby bars, inside bars happen quite often. It's only when they happen in relationship to other important levels that you see on your charts. So it's only when you take the time to understand how bar patterns emerge and what they indicate that you can take positions for your trades. Don't forget to also keep one eye on the stop loss limits also. As you'll gather from the above information, price action trading is based around trends and momentum. The idea is simple. Once a trend changes, then the momentum often grows. It's only when a stronger opposing trend emerges that the direction changes. So keep in mind, I, I give the example of a hamster in a cage. You know, you see that a hamster in his cage and he gets on that wheel and he starts turning and, and it's taking all of his effort and that wheel's starting to turn. Before you know it, he's running a mile, a mile a minute, and that wheel's spinning around in that cage. Same thing with the markets. When a trend starts developing, it's hard to get it to develop, but once it starts rolling, it gets easier and easier. It's harder and harder to stop it because it gets its own momentum. But once it gets stopped and it starts reversing the other direction, you'll see the exact same thing happening as it musters momentum. So in between these relatively strong trends, there will be periods of consolidation, sideways trading, and price will often bounce off support and resistance lines. In many ways, support and resistance levels are self-fulfilling prophecies. Many traders now use technical analysis and take them into consideration. However, price action trading offers the best of both worlds with technical analysis and human import, input from a trader. So don't act with a trade until the market itself confirms your opinion. Being a little late in a trade is insurance that your opinion is correct. In other words, don't be an impatient trader. So how can price action help you understand trading? There are numerous disadvantages and advantages using price action trading strategy. And ultimately it comes down to how disciplined you are as a trader. Some of the advantages, and keep these in mind, because you have to know the negative as well as the positive. Many of the strategies we mentioned above be over, or over, can be overcautious by some people. When waiting for a definitive change in the trend, there are many times when interday prices could spike above resistance support, then recover. These can be false flags and can be potentially expensive in the long run. Now keep in mind, trading, there is no trading guarantee. You want to enter the best trade possible with the highest potential. But trading is all about risk management because you're not going to get it right all the time. You know, you get two soccer teams on the field. They both practice. They all have the best players. They all have the best records. And you know what? God knows what happens. And the, the favorite team loses and gets their, their, their butt handed to them. The whole thing here is never to get your butt handed to you. 
always to be able to take a small loss. And if you get overcautious, you never make any good trades. If you're undercautious and reckless, you make lots of bad trades and you're gone. Use your charts and your price action and your understanding of the personalities to make a good decision as to where market momentum is taking you. And then use your best, 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 best efforts to set the best stop loss pro uh, possible. And then take advantage of every bit of profit you can if that trade goes in your direction. Too many traders, you know, they set stop losses and pay very little attention. I spend more time once I've opened a trade than I do deciding to open it. What is new? Because I am constantly moving my stop losses. Okay. I constantly using trailing stop. I'm constantly closing positions. Once not in profit either. If I had imagined an asset doing this thing in my head, so I said, I'm going to open my trade and I'm imagining this is the way it's going to move. And it doesn't do that. I get the hell out of the trade. I'll take the small loss. So when looking at chart trends, not all traders will have the same opinion. Some will go long while others will go short. And that's why the market works so great. These decisions are based on their opinion of the technical analysis as opposed to fundamental analysis. Whether you are ignoring the fundamentals is debatable because in theory, Contract price today should reflect all of the information in the public domain. Now, it's very difficult to ignore the fundamentals because we don't live in a, you know, in a box. We're all watching news, we're all reading newspapers, we're all talking to friends. But when you start trying to figure out how long, it, you know, how long Russia is going to keep on invading Ukraine or when Biden's going to open up the strategic reserves, you're just guessing. Basically, let the market talk and listen to what the market is saying. You'll see that all in your price action. So as we touch, while price action trading is based on technical analysis and reading a situation, it is not always cut and dry. So after hitting a new high, an exchange rate falls back as a result of profit taking. While it will depend on the support and resistance levels, one trader may expect a double top and then a move to a higher ground. However, a different trader may see it as a chart of the start of a new downtrend. Okay. What's going to make you better than the next guy is how much historical time you, you know, you've looked at and how much of the personality you understand and how familiar you are with that asset. And that's why I say you could only be an expert on a handful of assets. One classic indicator that a trend is changing is high trading volume. So if price is stuck in a bound range, bouncing between relative support and resistance on relatively low volumes, one investor may see this as a trading opportunity, while another investor may see this as a lack of interest and assume a likely break through the support level at some point, prompting strong momentum into a downtrend. Now, unless you understand how this asset and what the volume of this asset is without some mathematical calculation, without some, by feeling that volume, by looking at how that volume is increased and understanding how, how volume affects that particular asset. Because two assets can have two different relationships with volume. So does price action trading demand discipline? Well, the simple answer to that is yes in the right hands. Price action strategy can be highlight periods of consolidation, the emergence of a new trend, and phases of sideways trading. The key here is to see what is in front of you as opposed to trying to manipulate the chart data into what you want to see. <coughs> now, one of the other reasons I push price action trading as well as using your charts and historic to make decisions, because it's something we can understand. You and I don't have to spend six months learning how to use Bollinger Bands properly and testing and evaluating when we can add those later. We can look at a chart and it's gonna take you several months to understand the ins and outs of a particular asset. But it's something that we can gain the knowledge and experience on it. 
is something that we can grasp and we can understand. So the basic difference is a price action incorporates both technical analysis and human input. Effectively, you are monitoring emerging trends and reading these with varying degrees of discipline and experience. While there is a degree of human input with regards to price action trading, there's also a need to be disciplined even if you are marginally missing out on several trades. The idea is blunt. When the turning point occurs and momentum builds for a new trend, you will be there. So if you do have any questions, and I think a couple of you guys wrote some things in, okay, most of what you've written in is about time frames. I can't answer you about time frames, only because time frames and the time you use to make your trade is very personal. It's based on your strategy. Face it, we're trading in small time increments. We're not day traders. We're having to close a trade the same day. But most trades in CFDs don't stay open more than 72 hours. Most of us look at, I look at a one hour chart personally to get a feel for what that asset is going to do. I may, after that, look at a 15 minute chart or 30 minute chart, and then I'll look at a 15 minute chart to determine my entry and exit points. So you have to figure out what your strategy is, how you're gonna put this together into a whole. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. And again, someone will write answers to you in more detail. So thank you very much for joining us and I'll talk to you again later. Somebody asked me, can I recommend any books on price action? To be honest with you, I can't. Because I haven't read a, a book, you know, all of us today are on the internet. And you can search and find articles on the internet. Okay. Don't look for what gurus want to tell you to do. Just do some research on the internet. Find the patterns. You know, read and, and analyze for yourself. Um, but I don't know. Today, I don't know any books anymore. I'm sorry, but, you know, I, that's a truthful answer. So thank you very much for joining us and have a great trading day. Bye now.